Next up, Lucy. Lucy's favorite movies are Jurassic Park movies. And I'm really, really happy she didn't take design lessons from those. I think probably the Jurassic Park designers could have taken lessons from Lucy. Please join me in welcoming Lucy on stage. Enjoy it. Thanks, Peter. Either one of these? Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about a technique that we use at Atlassian to solicit peer feedback on designs. Um, this technique is a ritual in the design team. We do it all the time. But it's also been adopted by other disciplines within the company to get feedback on things like product roadmaps, technical approaches, blogs people are about to post. It can really be used for anything. Um, but before I get into walking you through this method, maybe you're wondering why we need a step-by-step -step method to get feedback from our peers. So I just want to take a moment to unpack that, and I thought I'd do that with an example. So I'm a designer, and I've recently been working on a new design for a homepage for developer.atlassian.com, one of our websites. And at the moment, I'm in pretty early stages of the project. I'm really looking at what content needs to be displayed on our homepage, what order it should be in, and how that content should be structured. So you can tell from the pretty wireframey state of this design that it's very much a work in progress, and I'm really focusing on nailing down those bigger questions. I want to get some feedback from my team on this design. So I might post it on a Confluence page and send this to my colleagues and ask them what they think. This happens all the time. And then I might get some comments like this. This isn't the right blue. You've used a ro the wrong illustration here. I think we should rethink this copy. I think it's funny. I hate this pattern. Have a look at apples. These people are creepy. <laughs> And the problem with comments like this is, one, they, they're not focused on what I'm focusing on. They're focusing on the details, whereas I'm trying to nail down those larger questions. They're largely opinion-based, and they're not really actionable. So for a designer, it's hard to take this design forward based on this feedback. Sparring is the name of the play or technique or method that we use at Atlassian to solicit peer feedback on our work. And it's designed to significantly reduce these problems. Sparring is a structured in-person or via video conference for our remote friends, way of getting feedback and driving a project forward. As a designer at Atlassian, I am a part of sparring four times a week. It's super important to our culture. It's been around at Atlassian for a really long time, years even before I joined Atlassian, and we're continuously trying to improve it and we're modifying it. But the core steps of sparring and the core themes haven't really changed over the years. So today what I'm going to do is walk you through those core steps and then I'm going to try and do a little bit of a demo of how my team currently is doing sparring. So let's get started. <laughs> the first step in a sparring session is setting the context. This is a super important first step in any sparring session. And in this phase, you need to bring your sparring participants into your problem space. So here you would explain the background of the project, the problem you're trying to solve, the users and the user types, the use cases, and where the project is at. Is it in the early stages? Is it almost finished? I really take my time to do this in the session. If it's an hour session, I might spend 20 minutes setting the context because it's really important that the participants have the right context to be able to provide relevant, actionable feedback. The next thing you need to do is tell your participants what kind of feedback you're looking for. 
So for my homepage design, I would say I'm looking for feedback on the information architecture. I don't want feedback on the UI visual design um, or UI copy. Then you have your walkthrough phase. Here you would go step by step, um, walk through your end-to-end -end flow or your proposed solution or the work you've done so far. It's really important to not justify why you have made certain decisions during this step. Just walk through the user experience and if something feels unnatural to someone, they'll call it out during the feedback phase. Ask your participants not to interrupt you while you're walking through your solution. Um, ask them to let you go through it end to end. And then we have time for clarifying questions. And this is not feedback. This is just if someone has a question or wants you to walk through part of the flow again. Then it's feedback time. And at this point, it's quiet time. There's no talking. Participants individually take notes on their points of feedback. And they write down any feedback they can think of, whether it's on sticky notes or in Envision or Confluence or whatever tool you're using for sparring. They just write down everything they can think of. And then we have time to share feedback, discuss, debate, and challenge each other. So depending on how big your room is, you may do this differently. Sometimes we go around the room and each person reads out every piece of feedback that they have. Sometimes, if it's a large group, we say, who has really hard-hitting feedback, disruptive feedback, um, and we'll start with those and just keep going till we run out of time. So then we don't get to the minor little nits. And then finally, after sparring, you have your next steps. Sparring is a way to generate feedback. It's not designed to come to a consensus or make decisions or be a brainstorming session. Um, it's up to the designer to then take this feedback and drive the project forward based on that feedback. So the designer makes the decisions. If you want to organize a one-on-one -on -one with someone who had an interesting point or you want to organize a brainstorming session, that happens outside of sparring separately. So organize those things um, after sparring. And those are the core steps of a sparring session. The old school play has you print designs out and stick them up on the meeting room wall and everyone writes their feedback down on post-it notes and they stick them up. But I wanted to do a little demo now of how my team in Atlassian is currently running sparring. As I said, we're constantly improving sparring and we're trying new tools and new ways of doing it. And at the moment, we're using this tool here called Mural. And as I said, I'm doing sparring four times a week, so I'm in Mural all the time. This is not sponsored by them, by the way. <laughs> um, Mural is a visual collaboration tool. And the reason I really like it for sparring is because you get these big blank canvases and you can throw your, all your designs up there and then your participants, your colleagues, can come in and put sticky notes on your designs, virtual sticky notes on your designs. And then you can keep that mural board forever. So instead of having to take your designs off the wall and take photos of them that get lost and it's all a mess, you can just keep this board and refer to it as you're iterating on your designs. In my team, we have a template that we use for sparring, um, a mural template. And we ask anyone who's going to come to our sparring session to fill out this template before they arrive. So this is the template. As you can see, we ask them to fill out the status their project is currently at, um, some background information, their hypothesis, what kind of feedback they're looking for, and any specific questions that they're currently tackling. And then down the bottom, we have the feedback guide for the participants. We ask people who are coming to our sparring to fill this out before sparring, a few days before, and send it to all the sparring participants beforehand, so we all have some time to get a little bit familiar with the project. So here's my completed template for my homepage design. And in the actual sparring session, I would then walk through this template, just to brief everyone. 
So I would explain each of these points, um, and then I would walk through the design, or if I had a series of designs here, I would walk through the user experience, just as I would any other sparring session. So I'd walk through the experience, and then, just with any other session, it's <laughs> quiet feedback time. And I have a little video of it here. So as you can see, our participants are copying sticky notes from the sticky note guide down the bottom and posting their comment directly on the design. And you can see in the sticky note guide, we have different colors for different types of feedback. So if it's a positive piece of feedback, uh, you'd use the green sticky note. If it's a torpedo, which means it's really disruptive, um, hard-hitting feedback, you'd use the black sticky note. And we have different colors for questions, UI feedback, have you thought about this? Um, so that's the guide for participants. Then when everyone's finished leaving their sticky notes, I, as the driver of the session, would take a look at this high level um, and I can see what colors have been placed on the board. And then because we have a lot of people in our sparring sessions in my team at Atlassian, um, we start with the black um, sticky notes, the black pieces of feedback, because those are the really big disruptive um, points. So you can see here someone said, we shouldn't be putting dynamic content on the home page because we have no one to update it. And then we would read these out to the group and we would have time to debate and discuss. And in my team, there's always debating <laughs> and discussing on black post-it notes in particular. So as the driver, I would just facilitate the discussion, let people challenge each other, but we don't come to a consensus. It's then just up to me to take in everyone's feedback and opinions and drive the project forward. And that is how we run sparring in my team and the general core concepts of how to run a sparring session. I hope that you can take these and make it your own, use your own tools, um, whether it's Confluence or Envision or you do it with sticky notes and print things out on the wall, just make it your own. And I hope you have a really great time getting feedback on whatever it is you're working on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucy. I think we have time for one or two questions. Questions? Yes. Cool. Are there any questions? There's one over here. Uh, I actually have two, but let's start with the first one. Uh, <laughs> uh, usually, uh, to stay productive, you ha have to end uh, a working session by defining what are the next steps. Uh -huh. And I see that uh, this uh, feedback uh, uh, procedure is very open-ended. I mean, uh, a meeting may have uh, uh, more meeting after it. So I think it may be hard to define what is the actual next step after a feedback session uh, mm -hmm. happens. How do you deal with it? I totally understand what you're talking about. So it depends on what kind of feedback you get in the session. Um, if you got a black post-it note and um, there was a big discussion around it, you might then tell the group how you're going to, uh, how you plan to take that feedback on and do the next iteration of the design. But generally with sparring, we spar one design over and over again. So I'll take all of this feedback on and do another iteration of my design and then the following week I'll have another sparring session and show everyone the improvements I've made based on their feedback from last time, and then they'll have another round of feedback. So depending on how big the project is, we'll spar something a couple of times, many times. Um, so the participants in the session can see the design evolve each time. Does that answer your question? Anybody else? If there isn't anyone else, I mean, okay. Um, uh, I don't know if this is even an issue with professionals, but is it a problem dealing with uh, creator pride? I mean, I think this design is absolutely uh, fabulous and uh, nobody should even think about touching it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I definitely think it's a challenge. I think at Atlassian, at least, um, and other places I've worked as well, as a designer, it's something that you have to overcome. And you know that, you know these people in your team well, so you know it's not personal, and they're just trying to help you um, improve the design as best you can. Um, but it is definitely very difficult. I think it's something that a designer has to work to overcome, because getting feedback on your work is a big part of the job but I have experienced feeling defensive or um, yeah, being challenged on something that I feel really proud of. But that's why we do these sparring sessions so frequently so that you can get this input early and often so you don't feel really emotionally attached to one design and then you push it out and it's terrible and you're heartbroken. <laughs> so yeah, early and often and um, just work on that on a personal level.